Are you curious to know what's on the inside of a banana plant? I'm going to cut down one of my 10 feet tall bananas and show you what it looks like. Bananas of all types generally look the same inside. The variety that I'm showing you today is a Musa Bastu banana. This is also referred to commonly as a cold hardy banana or a Japanese fiber banana. First, I need to pick one to dig out. I'm looking around to see what I have on the outside that's going to be a good enough size to show you really what the inside looks like. Digging out a banana is no easy task. They're connected underground to neighboring plants that come from the same corm. You'll see the corm a bit later when we actually cut into the plant. Before we take a look at the inside, let's talk a little bit about the outside. Bananas are often referred to as trees, but they're technically classified as herbs. They don't have a hard trunk, no kind of woody texture to them, no kind of bark, none of the common elements that a tree has. The main shaft of the banana is referred to as a pseudo stem and is made up of dense leaf material. It's very similar to celery that got packed tight into a cylinder. Leaves of the banana plant grow up from the center and each new leaf grows out of the corm and adds thickness to the pseudo stem. Eventually they come out of the top. Leaves come out tightly wound and spread open once the majority of the leaf has been pushed out the top. As a banana plant gets ready to flower, a leaf will come out that's known as the flag leaf. This leaf will not be tightly wound like the others and will only grow to about half the length of the leaves that you see at the top of the plant. Sometimes there is a pre-flag leaf that comes before the flag leaf. This is a little bit harder to detect. It falls somewhere between the size of a full leaf and the flag leaf and is not quite as loose as the flag leaf, but is not quite as tight as a regular leaf. After the flag comes the flower pod. The pod has thick petals on the outside that are similar in texture to a banana peel. These petals roll back one at a time to reveal rows of bananas that are referred to as banana hands. Bananas are actually the ovaries of the plant and female flowers are attached to the back of each banana. After a few hands emerge from the pod, subsequent petals roll back to reveal male flowers that do not have bananas attached. After several rows of male flowers, the pod will be spent. Once the flower pod comes out, that banana stem will not produce any more leaves and that stem will die. Fortunately, the corm underground will push out new plants and the cycle will continue to repeat with those new plants. So let's go ahead and cut this thing open and take a look at the inside. I'm gonna start by cutting the top off. There's nothing to see in the top that you can't see in the bottom and it just makes it a little bit more manageable to work with the plant. Splitting the pseudo stem in half, you can see the patterns of the leaves going up the stem. And a cross section of the plant allows you to see rings that are created as those leaves come through the center and grow and add to the size of the pseudo stem. Looking at the base of the plant, you can see the pattern of leaves disappear as the corm begins. The corm is the growth engine of the plant. It's where the main plant draws its energy and it's the source of all new baby plants referred to as pups that come out of this main plant in the future. The corm is a similar texture and density to jicama. If you're not familiar with jicama, think of it like a spongy potato. The corm sits just below the stem underground and you can see from the corm there are a few new plants that were starting to shoot out of the side here. These would have eventually turned into their own banana plants had I left this thing in the ground. The roots of the plant are also attached to the corm operating just like any other type of plant roots, pulling nutrients and water from the soil into the corm, which then gets transferred into the plant above. Banana plants can be propagated manually through a process called corm division. This involves digging up the plant and cutting the corm into two or more pieces, and eventually each piece of that corm will grow into its own plant. Now you're familiar with the different parts of a banana plant, this will be useful if you're interested in growing your own banana plants for either decoration or fruit in the future. If you have any questions, drop them down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. 
Like and subscribe for more on growing tropical and subtropical plants in your yard, even in cold weather environments. Happy growing.